What's going on guys, Clint here. Welcome back to the channel, Code Commerce. And in this video, we're going to be creating this beautiful React.js slider styled completely with Tailwind CSS. So as you can see, we click on the right arrow, we can go to the next slide. If we click on this left arrow, we can go to the previous slide, or we can jump down here. We're actually mapping through some React, React icons, and we can jump through to that next or that specific slide. So if you say I built this in React.js styled with Tailwind CSS, then let's go ahead and get started. So let's just shrink that down a bit right now. And I'm already in my working, working directory here, just this React slider Tailwind. So what I want to do first is create our React application. I'm going to type npx create dash React dash app. Then let's go ahead and just install that in the current directory with a period. All right, you guys happy hacking. That means we are ready to go. So a few things I want to do right off the bat. Let's go ahead and before we get started, this app.css, the app.test, this logo.svg, report web files and the setup test. Let's just go ahead and remove all of those just to make this a little bit cleaner and easier to follow. So, and let's go ahead and install React icons. I'm going to type npm i react dash icons dash dash save, go ahead and press enter. And what we also need to do is install Tailwind CSS. So let's go to tailwindcss.com. Go ahead and click on get started. And let's click on this framework guides right here. So Next.js, Laravel, let's scroll all the way down and find create React app. So go ahead and click on that one here. The first step is create our React application. We've already done that. So let's move on to this step. I'm just gonna copy this install dash D Tailwind CSS. Let's go ahead and paste that in there. Next is to paste over this Tailwind CSS init-p. Init so let's go ahead and paste that. And that's pretty important. It's gonna create this tailwind.config.js file for us. And we need that for our next step. And essentially this content array right here, it just wants us to paste in this string there. So let's just paste it right in there inside of our content array. And then the final step in here is just to copy this over into our index.css file. So let's go in here and we can actually just replace all of that and, and now we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and start our server with npm start. We're gonna shrink that back down. I'm gonna say yes. And if you've already started your server, um, then make sure you have to restart it after you install Tailwind CSS. So, and it's, we're gonna get some errors here. We have to basically remove a few things. It's trying to load some things that we deleted. So let's remove that there. We can delete that rid of that and we'll say, we'll say import react from react. Then let's go into our index.js file. We need to get rid of this here and this report web vitals. So we should be good to go at this point. Perfect. So really, really cool thing about, um, about tailwind. For example, if I give an H one of hello, instead of having some big bold text, tailwind applies these base level styles. So as you can see, very, very customizable. So what I want to do first here, let's go ahead and what we need are some, some data to work with for our slides. So I'm just gonna pull these over from Unsplash. So I'm gonna create an array here. I'm gonna say const slides. Then inside this array, I'm just gonna paste in, essentially it's just an array of objects here. Each one has a URL, just like so. And feel free to use Unsplash images. You can use your own images, or if you're getting this from an API as well, this is just gonna, gonna basically simulate that. So what we need to do, we're gonna be using the use state hook. So make sure we import that use state at the top. Very nice. And then what we wanna do next, let's come down here and add in some JSX here. So let's add it in right here. And like I said, since we're using Tailwind, I'm just gonna give an H1 here flow just so we can see our text. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna give this a class name, okay? And I'm gonna say a max width of, give this a container here. I'm gonna say 1400 pixels. And we can use these brackets here to write custom values in Tailwind. So this isn't a, a, a Tailwind necessarily tutorial, um, but if you, if you wanna see how to build like a full website with Tailwind, I do have a lot of videos and I'll put one up in the cards above. So basic, basic stuff here say padding x of four and let's display this or position this as relative perfect now in here we can go ahead and get rid of this here basically i said a max width of 1400 pixels we have a height of 780 pixels width is full which is width of 100 percent this is an tailwinds plugin you guys if you like to see that whenever you hover on something this plugin lets you know what the css is so padding on the y-axis of four rem padding on the x-axis of, of of one rem then position relative so next let's go ahead and get our image here to display on the screen. So we're gonna create another div here. And this is where our image is gonna be. And actually it's not, it's gonna be um, 
we're going to fill it in with CSS. So let's go ahead and give it a class name so we can see it. So we'll say width dash full height depth full. So what is that saying is width hundred percent height, hundred percent. I'm going to give this some rounded edges with rounded to XL BG center BG cover. And I'm going to give a duration of 500. So we get a nice little like transition effect. Now we're going to use CSS to actually load our images here. But we'll use this style attribute here. And what we'll say is set the background image, just like so. And we use these back ticks. We can use our URL here. So I'm going to say URL and let's use a template literal, just like so. And what we're going to say, so we're looking for this slides array right there. So what I'm going to say is slides and let's just for now, I'm going to say zero to grab our first slide and we need the URL property. So I'm just going to say dot URL and there you have it. We have our slide display on the screen. We can go to the next slide by saying one, then we have a two and three and we have up to five total, but let's just go ahead and leave this as the first slide and we'll come back and make this dynamic as well. So next, what I want to have are some buttons right here. So whenever I hover on the screen, I can see a, my icon and actually click on it. So let's do that next. So I'm going to add in a little space right here and let's go ahead and we're going to have a, I'm going to just kind of label this. We'll have a left arrow. Then just below that, we're going to have a right arrow. So the arrows that we're going to be using, I'm going to go ahead and import these at the top. This is just the react icons. If you want to use a different icon package or you just use some text on the screen, that's fine as well. But for react icons, I'm going to import BS Chevron, uh, compact left from, we'll just say react dash icons slash BS there. And I'm going to grab the right one as well. There we go. So now we have access to these icons here. So next on this left, on this left arrow here, I'm going to create a div here and inside our div, I'm going to have our BS Chevron compact left. Let's go ahead and close that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And this one is going to be the right one. Now I can give some sizing properties. This is a react icon attribute. I can just say size, then 30, just like so. So as you can see, our icons are actually displaying on the screen, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and position these where, where we want them. Okay. So, and these are actually going to be a very, very similar sliding. So I'm just going to basically type it in on this at the same time. So let's give that parent div outside of the react icon, some class names, and let's just say, let's see here, what we want to say, absolute, I'm going to say top, 50% translate X zero. We'll say translate Y and I'll say negative 50% and left five text to XL. I'm going to say rounded full P dash two for some padding BG black with a 20 slash 20 for the alpha. We'll say text text white and cursor pointer just like so. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, they're stacked on each other right now. So this one, let's just change this to from left to right. And that should bring it all the way over here. Perfect. That's what we want right there, you guys. Now I actually don't want these to show unless I hover over my image. So how do we do that? So what we're going to say is basically we have to group this div here, this HTML element here with a parent element. So how do we do that with tailwind? We're going to come to the parent element that we want this to be active on. So this is the outside parent element, and I'm just going to give this a class of group. And then what we can say here, uh, let's see what we can say here. I'm just going to add this at the beginning here. Well, I'm going to do it to both of them at the same time. So what I'm going to say is I actually want this to be hidden. Okay. Then we can add this group property here. And then whenever this group is active, I'm going to say hover, just display as block. So now, as you can see, whenever we hover, you can now see our images. How cool is that? You guys smash the like button. If you feel like you're getting some value out of this, I would appreciate it. So also what we want to do is let's add in some, let's add in some dots down here to kind of represent all of our, you know, before we do that, let's go ahead and make this functional so we can actually jump to the next slide. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and add in some JavaScript. Okay. 
So again, we're already using our use state hook. Let's go ahead and make use of that right now. So what we're going to say, we're going to say const and let's say current index, and then we'll say set current index. And by default, let's just say use state, we'll just equal that to zero. So right now, right now we're, we have this set to zero and what we want to change is just this. We can change it to instead of zero in here, we'll set that to the current index just like so. So now we shouldn't see any changes. However, if we change our state up here, we should see a change in image. Hey, how cool is that? All right, so by default, we're just gonna start with the first object in our, in our array, which is this first image here. So what we wanna do next, let's come down here and create a couple functions so we can go to the previous slide with this button here and the next slide with that icon over there. So let's create a Const, we'll say prev slide, just an arrow function here. And before we do that there, I'm gonna copy that down. There we go, and we'll just change this to next slide, and there we go. Okay, so for this slide here, what we're gonna say, so we need to check to see, is this the first slide? So what we're gonna say is const is first slide equal to current index, if it is equal to zero, just like so. And then what we're gonna say is the new index, we're gonna use some logic here is first slide. If it's true, then we'll say slides.length minus one, else current index minus one. So there we go. And then what we want to do is just update our state. And we'll say set current index to the new to the new index, which is this right here. So let's go ahead and save that there. And we need to actually add uh, some click events here. So for our, uh, let's go find our icons. And what we're gonna say here on this compact left, which is just button on the left here, let's add in our function here. So we'll say on click and on click, what function do we want to run? We want to run this previous slide function. So we'll say prev slide, just like so. Hey, there we go. So now as you can see, we can cycle through to the previous image. Uh, this one doesn't work yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. So this one on click, what function do we want it to run? We'll say next slide, but we have not added anything in there yet. So we can't actually go to the next slide. So let's take care of that logic right now. And actually you guys, it also makes sense to, let's see here. Let's add a cursor pointer. Okay, that looks good there. This one here. That's why that wasn't working. I misspelled it. There we go. So now if we hover, and eh, there's a little hand. Perfect. All right, so let's hook this up so we can actually scroll to the next slide. So here is our logic here. And what we're going to say, basically, essentially almost the same thing. So we'll find, is this the last slide? And the last slide is going to be current index equal to strictly equals to slides dot length minus one. So the new index, we'll say new index is equal to if last slide is true, so zero, then we'll say current index plus one. And then we need to update our state and we'll say set current index to the new index. So let's go ahead and save that you guys. Hey, how's that? You can actually scroll to the next image. Now you can go to the previous image. All right, that's awesome you guys, smash the like button. But hey, we still have one more thing to do. We can't see our dots down there. And I would actually like to map through how many, uh, however many images we have, I would like to map through that many dots. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So what we wanna do, let's just scroll down here. And before we do that, I'm actually gonna import another icon, the dots. So let's import rx.filled just like that from react-icons slash rx. Notice the little rx is the prefix there, just as bs is that prefix right there. Okay, so next, let's scroll down here. Now, right below, we're gonna put this right below that div right here. Let's go ahead and create another div. And inside here, we'll say, let's see here, we'll say, let's go ahead and give this a class name. 
Now I want this to display as flex. So I'm going to say top four, justify center, and padding on the uh, y axis of two. So what we're going to say, let's actually map through all of our images. And for every image that we have inside of our slides array, so we're going to map through all of our slides. And for every slide that we have, we're going to render out a icon on the screen. And the icon is going to be that little dot. So what we're going to say here, let's open up our brackets here so we can write some JavaScript. And what we're going to say is slides.map. And then in here, we're going to look first, we're going to say slide and we need a slide index. And then we'll say, this is going to be an arrow function. And instead of the curly brackets, since we want to render something out on the screen, we actually have to use a parentheses there. Okay. So what we're going to say here, we'll say, we want to render out this div on the screen and inside this div is going to be our icon. Let's go ahead and add our RX dot filled just like that. There we go. So let's go ahead and save. Now, as you can see, there are our dots rendered out on the screen. So we can't, we, we can't click on them yet and that's okay. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make it to where we can click on those dots. So on this parent div, let's add a class name as well, real quick. We'll say text, uh, we'll say text to Excel. See if we can, yeah, there we go. Make them a little bit bigger and we'll say cursor pointer that way whenever we hover we can actually have our little hand there perfect so how do we actually go to the next slide by clicking clicking on a dot so what we need to do is create a new function so let's go up here and we'll create a function by the name of go to slide we'll say const go to slide and we'll pass in this slide index just like so and what we'll say is set the current index to slide index. So let's go ahead and save that there. Now, what we want to say here, hmm, actually we might not even, we probably don't even need that. We could just make this, we'll just throw it inside here. So let's go ahead and say, let's give this a key. We'll give it a key. React likes to give keys, otherwise it'll give you an error. It'll still work, but it, it'll still like to give a little error. So we'll say slide index as the key, and that's our key right there. And what we can say is on click and on click, we're going to pass in this function here and we'll just say, go to slide, slide index. So go ahead and save that. Or right, yeah, we'll, we'll just leave this open up here as well. There we go. So we can run that and we're going to pass in the slide index. So each of these, each of these icons, since we're mapping through them, we gave it a, each one, a key. And that's how we're going to keep track of which this is the first one. This is the second slide. This is the third slide. So now whenever we click on one of these, we should be able to go to that corresponding slide. So there you have it. You guys, this is a react react um, react program right here, a react image slider styled completely with Tailwind CSS. Smash the like button, you guys, if you feel like you got some value out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment if you have anything to say, and I'll put up some links to some other videos up in the cards above. So thanks for watching, you guys. Smash the like button. I'll see you on the next one.